Thank you so much. Uh, uh, the moderator, distinguished participants, my subject this afternoon is uh, uh, cultural diplomacy, the case of China and in Africa. Uh, I choose this subject because before I came to Berlin early this year, I was Tanzanian ambassador to China. And I was in China for three years, so I know that country uh, very well. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, as you all know, we live in an extremely diverse, a culturally diverse society. And despite the modern technological advancements which have made our world a global village, culture still plays a very important role. And that's why we always hear uh, terms like our, our European values, our American values, our African values, and so on. That's why it's necessary for leaders and the public in general to manage culture very effectively so as to open positive diplomatic communications, not only among nations, but also among our people, so as to promote peace as well as human development. Cultural diplomacy in Africa has a very long history. And because the subject is, is uh, Africa and China, may I mention that or rather, it has been mentioned in Chinese and in Egyptian literature that during the, the peak of, of trade ag activities along the so-called Silk Road, that was between the year uh, 1 BC and, and 30 BC, in Egypt at that time, the ruler was Cleopatra the seventh. And the literature indicates that Cleopatra's robes were indeed uh, made by silk uh, from China. I come from East Africa. Between 100 AD and 1500 AD, the East African coast what is now coast of Somalia, coast of Kenya, coast of Tanzania, coast of Mozambique, was host to so many immigrants and merchants and traders from uh, the Arabian Gulf, from Persia, from Western India, as well as from China. Uh, the East African coast at this time had a very uh, flourishing, flourishing city states. These city states include uh, Sofala, Kilwa, Mafia, Zanzibar, Mombasa, Kismayu, and others. These city states, which flourished between 100 AD to 1500 AD, had a very vibrant cultural and economic, and economic ties with China, uh, Chinese old dynasties at that place, at that time. These uh, 1,500 years, as you know, were followed by interruptions of several, several foreign occupations in Africa. I don't have to mention, we all know. And the impact of that occupations had resulted uh, cultural diversity, and this cultural diversity had an impact on how we began to manage our diplomatic practices. I have picked the subject uh, China-Africa relations uh, because we feel that 
in this century, 21st century, which is the era of globalization, has opened up many investment alternatives for Africa, including China. However, it does not mean that before or the 21st century, China was not there. Indeed, since 1955, after the Bandung Conference of uh, China, of Africa and Asia, China opened itself the world. After this conference of 1955 in Bandung, in Indonesia, the People's Republic of China and the Arab Republic of Egypt signed the first cultural cooperation agreement. Uh, that was in 1956. And this agreement uh, in 1957 was followed by, by strong uh, member Chinese cultural delegation, which visited Egypt as well as the Sudan at that time. After about 10 years, 1965, uh, several Chinese folk art, folk art troops visited Mali, Guinea, Mauritania, Ghana, and Tanzania. African and Chinese governments have attached uh, great importance to developing cultural diplomacy and ties in the last 60 years. During this last 60 years, 75 bilateral agreements on cultural exchange as well as more than 150 action plans have been, have been signed. Among others, China-Africa cultural relations have the following uh, four main features. One, uh, frequent visits of, 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 of high level official and government delegations, frequent visits by performing groups from both Africa and China, art exhibitions, and theme activities that promote culture from both China and Africa, Educa educational cooperation. For instance, Chinese Academy of Traditional Medicine. Uh, every year since 1965 has been sending uh, groups to Tanzania to participate in cooperative programs with the Tanzania Traditional Medicine Center in Dar es Salaam. And indeed, we have been uh, making experimentation on medication for AIDS. And we have made a lot of achievements in, in that area. So it's on this firm foundation of cultural diplomacy that has made China able to get very close to Africa in the spheres of social and economic relations. At the beginning, as we all know, China attached importance to African national liberation cause and struggle against apartheid in South Africa. But by the year 1979, China-Africa relations had already achieved great strides. Trade, culture, sports, education and military delegations were sent to both sides. By 1979, over 1,000 African students and professionals were trained in China, and dozens of medical teams also arrived in Africa. And more than 50,000 Chinese in engineers, 50,000 Chinese engineers and technicians together with their Tanzania and Zambian colleagues jointly constructed a 1,860-kilometer-long Tanzania-Zambia railway known by Tazar, by the acronym of Tazara. This is very important because at that time when Zambia was surrounded by hostile regimes uh, from the south and the west, uh, Dr. Kaunda and the late Julius Nyerere, the president of Tanzania, went around the world 
visited all the cities, as well as the World Bank and the IMF, so that uh, this railway can be funded. But they were all, they requested us to stand down. They had to go to, go to China, and Mao Zedong accepted their request. At that time, China was a poor country, so it was indeed a poor man helping another poor man at that time. And that railway is still functional and is contributing to the economy, not of Tanzania and Zambia, but also of, of other landlocked countries in Africa, such as DRC Congo, Malawi, Zimbabwe, and others. Every year since 1965 to date, Tanzania sent several Swahili teachers to Beijing to teach Swahili to Chinese. And China sent students to Africa to study Swahili in Hausa. In the, world of, in the words of the late Julius Nyerere, the founding father and first president of Tanzania, I quote, African countries should not only unite to speak with one, another, with one voice to China, but also set a reciprocal relation with China to elevate its position on the international stage. For China, it could break the worst diplomatic blockade by supporting China. And China helps Africa to liberate itself from colonialism. Therefore, aiding Africa is also aiding China, and a last of court. But those were the days, those were the days before the 21st century. During the 21st century, investment scenarios in Africa changed. Tr our traditional economic uh, friends and investors uh, from Europe, America, and Japan were joined by newcomers. And these newcomers are uh, not other than Chinese, Brazilians, Indians, South Koreans, Malaysians, and others. According to United Nations Commission on Trade and Development, UNCTAD, sources, between the years 2000 and 2010, foreign investments in Africa rose from, the, from about US dollar 10 billion to US dollar 70 billion. And the projection is about uh, for this year and next year, year 2015, uh, the projection is about 150 billion US dollar worth of investments into Africa. So it's around these developing developments that Forum for China-Africa Cooperation was established in Beijing in the year 2000, with the view, among others, to promote China's investments in Africa. Uh, a similar summit has been held a few days, a few days ago in Washington, a summit between Africa and, 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 and American, American leaders. But China has had already uh, such a summit about 14 years ago. Very briefly, what is Forum on China-Africa Cooperation is all about? Uh, it's an effective mechanism for collective dialogue and multilateral cooperation between China and Africa, and has put in place an important framework and platform for new type of China-Africa partnership, featuring long-term stability, equality, and mutual benefit. That was two thousand, two year 2000. But this uh, forum had formulated plan of actions at the, uh, the meetings, at the later forums uh, in Addis Ababa, in, in Beijing, uh, Beijing II, in Sharam El Sheikh in, in Egypt, and uh, uh, later this year, uh, there will be another, another follow-up uh, uh, formulation plans for Forum on China Africa Cooperation in Johannesburg in South Africa. Uh, China's relations with Africa has really supported Africa in its uh, uh, regional integration. 
those of you who have been to Addis Ababa, uh, that uh, famous headquarters uh, of, o of AU was built by the assistance of China. And China has been very close to Africa in its uh, regional uh, integration bodies like COMESA, SADAC, as well as East African community. Ladies and gentlemen, very briefly, may I uh, wind up my short presentation by saying that uh, as a Tanzanian and as an Africa, uh, we, are, we do not subscribe to some claims that uh, China's partnership with Africa is not based on sincere friendship, equal and mutual respect. We don't subscribe to, subscribe to that. We also don't subscribe that there's negative motives behind increasing uh, Chinese interest in Africa. We also don't subscribe to the claims that uh, China is plundering Africa. To the contrary, we are of the opinion that China's presence in Africa complements the investments and collaboration we already have with other partners from the world. I must, I must indicate this from the start because I come from Tanzania where we built a, a railway, a 1,860 long kilometer railway with a very soft loan which Tanzania and China and, and Zambia have already paid. And China is still asking us to manage and maintain that uh, uh, lifeline uh, in, in, East, in Central and East Africa. I'm told that there will be a session of question and answer. So may I once again thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to exchange experiences. Sante sana, Ms. Wahid. <laughs>